happy? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, my goodness. <coughs> Can you guys look at the drive with all the documents? Is it, like, ordered, like, the minutes and, like, their file folders? You have my drive, which has all the documents that you've ever created, and then you have um, over on the left hand side shared with me, mm -hmm. which is everything anybody else ever created and shared with you personally or the select board. But the organization of it is there. Is no organization. I can't find it. I don't know how to use it. I will. It's, I will show it. <laughs> it's not an easy task. Are we all set? All right. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back to the agenda and Bob will continue with what you need. Uh, two quick items. Uh, first, uh, the flashing LED speed limit signs have been installed on Beta Road. Um, I've only heard uh, and seen two complaints uh, about them, but I have had people call me and say thank you, especially if you live on the road, right. Right. slowing them down. Yeah. And I actually think it's working. Good. Um, so, um, and the signs are, are, are set up so that they only flash for a couple hours in the morning during the commute and the evening during the commute. So they're not flashing all day long and all night long. So. Okay. I was wondering, because I didn't see them. Yeah, sometimes you drive by, you don't see them on. And yeah. Yeah, we, we <laughs> set them up that so way. They so they don't have that time the only, period. Yeah, yeah, they only flash during the, the high traffic volume time. Which is in your morning commute to work. Morning commute and the coming home. home. Yeah, okay. In the late afternoon. Okay. Uh, this morning, actually for the last couple of days, we've had a heat issue downstairs. Uh, we did not have heat on the north side of the building downstairs. Uh, Townsend came in today and they had to replace the master thermostat, digital thermostat that was in my office, and then they had to replace a uh, fuse that was in the, uh, the main mechanical room someplace. Okay. So I'm estimating uh, it's probably going to cost about $250 to make that repair for Townsend. Purchase order uh, 1888 for, to Townsend for thermostat and fuse in the amount of 250 I'll second that. Any discussion? Oh. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, fire station had heating problems too. Had town funds in come in. Wasn't a good heating time for tomorrow. That's all that I have for the board. Anything for me? Negatory. Right. Um, yeah. And I'll submit it one yourself. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't think you have to actually stay for this, but um, I'd like to make a motion that we adjust the detail rate effective August 1st of 2019 to $44 an hour. I'll second it. Any further discussion? As of August 1st of 2019. Yeah. Uh, so it seems like this was an oversight that... We, we think we did it, but we have to go back. And to how much, how much in the hour? 44. 44 even. It should be 44 or overtime, whichever is greater. Okay. Can you change that? Because there are yeah, two yeah. full-timers that make more than 44 an hour, so. Oh, oh. All the detail rates. Okay. 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 So 44 or overtime. Whichever is greater. Whichever is greater. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, Bob. All right. Where are we? Uh, okay, so we're at town meeting. Um, oh, I should have been the community input just because we didn't do it before. Community input? All righty. Lively crowd over there. <laughs> All right, so we are. Um, how is that consent calendar? Um, oh, yes. Go cool. ahead. <laughs> Motion to accept the consent calendar as a supply. So, uh, we can just do that by consensus, yeah. right? Great. Consensus? Yes. Okay, yes. we're all set on that. Oh. Uh, highway's not coming in, right? Um, no, I, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, I'm, no fire's coming, so we'll just keep on going and put them in when it comes. All right, so 2020 town meeting. Meet the moderator. So he's coming in on um, Monday the 27th to talk about the warrant with you and the deliberative session and how things are going to go. Um, 
he'll be here at 6.30. Just a reminder that Monday night is a public hearing, 6 o'clock for the transfer station ordinance. Okay. Make sure you remind them to, I would assume that Ed would want to be here for it. Okay. All right. Um, warrant? The warrant. So the warrant needs to be um, finalized and posted by Monday, but um, if that can happen tonight, all the better. You have um, a new version in front of you. Um, it is the same as the most recent version you've seen, with the exception of um, Article 13, um, the police cruiser payment had not said raise and appropriate $13,000. It just said something not quite as, not quite that. So um, that language was cleaned up and then um, uh, a recap of our snafu on Saturday that the forestry vehicle was not discussed at the public hearing, but because it is in the budget document, um, the operating budget, the um, Department of Revenue says that we can proceed with that, so that is included in the warrant. So, um, all the articles have the select board recommendation because you all chose to put it on here, so I'm bringing that to your attention in case you want to change any of that before you um, approve the final um, version. Also, all of them are now marked with the Budget Committee recommendation because they did recommend all of them. So, um, the things to think about are, um, you know, wording of any of them, by the way. Um, this has now passed the pre-review of the Department of Revenue, which is not the same, they would say, as legal review. Um, but at least it passes their muster. Um, so, you have three petition warrant articles. Um, those do not have a recommendation from you all. You can choose to recommend or not recommend or not include a recommendation at all. So, um, what is a petition warrant article? A petition warrant, so, articles can only come onto the warrant by way of the select board or um, the planning board with zoning ordinance um, revisions um, or by petition. Um, the law allows that a, um, a petition with the signature of 25 registered voters or a certain percentage of the population in a greater, in a bigger community, but in mm -hmm. Rollinsford 25 passes. Um, the standard, um, that they get to put um, something they want voted on on the board. And so you need to, um, you need to include that. So we have three um, that came in. There was a fourth for um, a zoning amendment that didn't meet the deadline for um, zoning amendments because we all learned the hard way that zoning amendments by petition have a different deadline than um, other petition warrant articles because they have a different process because the planning board has to have their public hearings for those. So a petition warrant article is the people's desire to vote on something that maybe the governing body doesn't want to put or doesn't think to put on the warrant. So is it the case that, is it typical that it's done outside of, because they could easily just come in and say, I would like this on the ballot, right, and we could recommend it, but is the case that people just don't want to do that sometimes? Um, they either were, or they were concerned that we wouldn't be interested in it, or they just didn't want to take the time. You, yeah. you know, you can't speculate about people's motives. That, that certainly is a way to get something on the warrant. People certainly <coughs> could come to the board and and have ideas and discuss the ideas and maybe even write it together, and then the board can choose to put it on there. And you can even choose to put. Um, it on the warrant and not recommend it, but because you just respect somebody's desire to have it voted on mm -hmm. or something, you, you really can't do that. Cool. Okay, so we, we need to address eight, seven, eight, nine, whether we recommend it or not, is what we need to do. So yep. let's do Article 7. What is your desire for Article 7? I wouldn't attach any recommendation or not re recommendation. Uh, I would want to see what this is going to do, how this would impact us financially. Well, you, you looked at it, didn't you? 
Um, the, well... No, from the petitioner. What their effect would be? Like, Show me the math. How would this affect the town? Well, other, you know, we've done some math about okay. it, and, and um, we, we've come to find it. So this is, so for those of who you heard not looking at the piece of paper, this is um, about changing the benefit amount for those who qualify for elderly mm -hmm. exemptions, and then cha um, increasing, so increasing the benefit amount, and then also increasing the um, income and asset qualification limits um, so that more people would qualify. So anecdotally, and, and um, pretty obviously, if you raise the standards, then more people will qualify. Mm -hmm. The more people who qualify, the more the tax rate goes up to compensate for the benefit. In other words, everybody else pays for that benefit. Um, so that aside, where we currently stand with our qualification standards, I haven't looked at the benefit, but um, with our income and asset qualification standards, um, we are um, meeting most cities and towns. Um, there are not a lot of them that have higher. And, and those that do have higher um, qualifications um, tend to be wealthier communities with higher assessed values. Because if you think about, so for example, <coughs> Bo has higher um, standards, um, but property is worth more in Bo. So when you take $100,000 off of the value of a single family home in Bo, it has less of an effect on the overall taxable property than it would in Rollinsford because Rollinsford's assessed values, a, a two bedroom home in Rollinsford is probably not worth the same as a two bedroom home in Bo is what I'm trying to say. And so that variety changes the effect of sure. these things mm -hmm. on those communities. So. Um, well, what we do offer I, it has, has been on the books unchanged for as long as I am aware. Um, it is also um, in line with what um, approximately 200 of the 246 mm -hmm. cities and towns in New Hampshire offer. So what was the age categories? Um, what, was it down to 65? Yeah, I, be I believe those age categories, you can't change the age categories. You can only change what is the benefit of, you know, when you are in those age categories. Why can't you change the age category? Well, because the law lets you do what you can do. So, so they say you're not old when you're 60, just when you turn 65? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there it is. I Live them up. <laughs> okay. No, I, di I didn't understand that. I didn't know that, so, okay. So, so, so the age brackets aren't changing. Um, but the, the increases. Right, right. So, so that's why they have them listed and it says increase from what's existing to what's changing. Mm -hmm. so, so they're not proposing to change the age brackets, just the benefit would change for each bracket. If you meet these, the income and the asset. Right. Both so those. offhand, um, about 20% of our population is, I don't remember if it's over 60 or over 65, and then another 20% of our population is over 50. So um, the impact would be huge. I can't speak for what the income and asset qualifications right. of people are, but um, anecdotally, the impact would be large. But we still have lots more data diving to do about it. Okay, so what is the desire of the board? I would not offer a recommendation. Like just not, we, you can just not do it. Either, you can just not, you can okay. just omit a recommendation. I would vote for omit. I, I concur with that. I'd like to take a stand, but clearly I'm being overruled. No, 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 no. You're a board of three because you're supposed to be three individuals. Well, so you if you have something to say, it's your power to say it. Not recommend it? Yeah. Okay, I would lean towards not recommend. So. Look at what you just did. <laughs> the power of the people. You just like swayed a vote. I was 50 50, but I got to take it. You know, got to land on one side. I just, I think that, you know, if someone. I've spoken to the people, the people, <laughs> so, uh, pieces of the people. I just think that if someone was really passionate about this, they could have had a conversation with, with the board first. Well, certainly. So, but, I, you know. You think so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I just 
I think it's just right now. I, I would say we don't recommend it. Maybe we need to look at it next year as one of our little projects to do. But I mean, this year after. But well, because it will be presented at the deliberative session, and because the deliberative session can change it, but it has to How maintain. How can they change that? That's not money related. Oh, they can change any. You, you can't change words. zoning. You can't change zoning articles, but you can change the petition ones. Sure. Oh, okay. But you have to maintain the intent. Okay. So you can't turn it into we're you know going to give children within certain other ages different exemptions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have to maintain mm -hmm. the intent and mm -hmm. <clears throat> within the limits allowed by law. But um, you you know th there there will be discussion at the deliberative session. So. I would anticipate, and, and who, you know, who's to know, but it raises the question, what is a reasonable benefit amount and what are the reasonable qualification standards? So, um, And if is the case that other towns also haven't looked at their, their elderly exemption limit, which is a possibility, but um, maybe someone will bring that point up at the deliberative session. Well, right. No, people are like, I don't agree that this should be done. And then someone says, well, the town, you know, all the other towns are wrong too, like, which could be the case. But I think it's important to know what our median income is and, you know, a little bit more about our demographics so that we can try to project. Um, I mean, you can't, even if 30% even if of the people would, would qualify, you don't know that 30, those 30% 30 would apply. So, so, so there's That's really true. no way to actually determine what the effect would be. But clearly, really. when someone does a petition, it's based on what your, you and your family or you and your, you know, area, this is going to help you, <laughs> you know, versus what is it going to do for the whole town. That's what petition work is about, about what it will affect the people who are signing those petitions. Um, should we add? A, I don't know if this is a. We're, we're past wording, but should we add any wording as to what the grounds for elderly exemption is? You cannot. Okay. No. So, um, so you can bring it up in discussion, and also keep in mind that um, now that we're past getting the budget printed, um, I'll be working on the voter guide. So mm -hmm. the voter guide is all about trying to um, help people understand the effect of warrant mm -hmm. articles and what we're proposing and why. And, and so we can speak to it some, as, in as much as we um, have time and can work on the data. So, all right. So, let's oh, just take the vote again. Just to, based on Article Seven, what is the desire um, for the recommendation? Not recommend. Not recommend. I'm not recommending. I'm I'll stay. You'll stay it. Neither. 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 Okay. All right. So it's passed. Not to recommend. Okay. Article 8, the sports book retail location by petition. Um, what is your desire on that? I'm assuming that's Deborah Bullard, right? or don't we know? They, they are the people who um, organized to have it submitted. Okay. Yes. Right. Should, should we be allowed the operation of sports book retail locations? What is a sports book retail location? Isn't it doing sport betting over online? I wouldn't. Because that just passed last year. It is something that just passed recently. Yeah. We did doing say that. What so. did you say? It's doing it's sports, sports betting. Um, sports online. betting online. Yeah. I, I think that's what it is. But but at a retail location. So yeah. there's some just other like there's Kino. a license. You yeah. Have, you have to be a retail oh, place. Kino. Oh, is that, that why Kino just got added to the to that place? Oh. Well, because it got passed last year. Yeah, got it. So I, I think it's another gambling thing that they're passing that can, but it has to have certain criteria of where it can be. Right, and so yeah. just because we pass it, if we pass it, doesn't mean that um, the state will only issue however many licenses they issue to whatever the criteria yeah. of those places. So there's no guarantee that we'd end up with anybody in Rollins who actually gets a license. I but, don't have any opinion on it, so I would default to recommend because I, I don't really, but it's up to you guys, I think. I I, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I would not for to recommend or not recommend. I have no idea of the impact or even really, like, there's no information here. Um, but to me, my opinion is that it doesn't affect the town financially. No, it doesn't. Um, so, I... No. Um, and you know, it, yeah. it, it might draw people in that you wouldn't no. normally have there. 
Um, um, thought about that with Kino too. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, th that yeah. is, you know, that is something that you might consider, and and, and I'm not trying to sway you, but mm -hmm. just it's it's not just about what directly financially um, would affect the town. You you certainly have under your purview um, other resources and other, you know, like you know. Some data would suggest that um, gambling establishments increase um, social issues, um, gambling, you know, addiction, and maybe you'd have more of a police presence at those locations, or or who knows what not. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that you make gut reactions based on those things, but you can certainly, if you know about things like that and have feelings about things like that, that can certainly influence your reason to want to recommend or not recommend something. Mm. I have no knowledge of gambling. Is there a glass that I can use to get a glass of water? I don't know, my water bottle. Oh, thanks. You just told me I have to get up. I mean, I, I don't think you have a the, the yeah, things pro or con about it. I, you know, I'm, but I'm not going to recommend something that I don't know anything about. Um, and I don't feel strongly about it. So the recommendation would be none? <laughs> you can just not say anything. Just, there's okay. no lines. So, okay, okay. Is what I'm okay. saying. Okay. I think we we do it to help people understand if it's not recommended, okay, there's a problem. Why are they not recommending it? Or right. it's recommended and there's no problem. If you're not medicate. recommending it, yeah. it really means I suggest you don't vote for this. Yeah. As opposed to a non like a like a blank. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, then, um, Jessica, is your feelings about this sports book retail? I will leave it to you. I will say that mine is we do not make either. Yeah, that was Miles too, so okay. that's what we'll do. Okay. And then Article 9 is a resolution of fair re redistricting by petition. I didn't know what that meant. I wanted to explain it to me, so do you guys know what it is? Um. Reading about it. So, um, this is about gerrymandering. It's about how every 10 years after the census, um, the legislature has to redraw all the congressional lines, all the state representatives, and, and how they represent their people. Um, those spaces, those geographic areas, get redrawn every 10 years by the legislature. The problem is that Whatever the group is, so I, I just want to disclose that I signed that petition publicly because it is a nonpartisan and a non-local petition. Um, the, the the problem with with gerrymandering, um, which which got its name from salamander because these these shapes of districts resemble salamanders because whatever the party is in power after the census draws the district according to um, the, the polling results and what benefits their party. So you try to you can like try to break up all of the other parties people so that they don't have unified voting power. So both parties do it. The so this article is asking that if it passes that the select board um, send notice to the governor and the legislature to say our people have voted to decide that we want you to get an independent commission together to do this in a way that does not consider um, voter registrations and election results and things like that, but um, in a nonpartisan, um, non-biased, more sensible way. Recommend. This compels us to do that. It compels you as a slip. Yes. I mean, there's no, there are no repercussions if you don't, but it is asking for you yeah. to pass the news on, essentially. Okay. I just heard that salamander thing okay. on a TV show. No, I just heard it, like, two weeks ago, and someone was like, oh, it was named after someone named Jerry, and then yes. they, something like that, and I don't know what it was. Now I really wonder what I was watching. Yeah. Something recent. It might have been in Hamilton. Okay, so um, what is your desire to recommend or not to recommend? Recommend. Recommend? I, I would recommend Okay. That. So it will be recommended by. Okay. So those are the only ones that we didn't have, those three, right? And everything else, based on what I heard at the public hearing, you're still going to recommend going forward with all the other articles? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. So that's done, right? So, so my question then is, does the board want to... Um, 
wait until Monday to continue to look at the language and think about the order of articles, or do you want to vote to authorize yourselves to sign a clean version of this once I insert those recommendations and be done with the warrant? The second one. Do, do it now. Yeah. Um, okay. is, is this the exact copy that will go on the warrant? Um, this is the copy except for um, things we just except for what you just did. Okay. This is it. Can you add a comma? Sorry. <laughs> article three. I'd be happy to. Article the twenty. One. Article three. The twenty five hundred. Um, there's there's a missing comma there and. Um, I'm sorry. Where can you just? Uh, um, what yeah, yeah, the, the, the dollar amount. Two five zero. Oh oh oh. Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> There you go. I'm Thank sorry. you. I didn't find the second one. Um, Good job. Article 14 of the police cruiser is the $1,000. The, the very sorry, last one. No, no. It's, there's a lot of numbers in here. And it, I don't know why it, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. <laughs> I hate that. I've never used commas. And I got in trouble today. Literally today, I sent to my boss something. I said a thousand. And before I'd been reporting things in thousands, and then I was trying to tell him one thousand, so I sent him one zero zero zero, and he thought I was saying one million because I didn't know it was just a whole comma nightmare. I should have had a comma, and I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything else looks good to me. Okay, so if you once we adjourn later, if you hang out for five minutes, then I'll make those changes and print it, and then you can sign it, and sure. we can be done and post it, and that would be great. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. do, do we need a? To move so would you please vote, vote that pending we, those so, changes? Yeah. Okay. So a motion should be made. Uh, I'll make a motion that we um, that we uh, authorize to to sign the warrant with the changes to Article Seven, Eight, and Nine that we discussed. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Very good. All right. Sign default budget. It's in your folder. So um, this is part of the process. Sorry, not that one. The other oh, one. Um, you got it, Jessica. Oh. Um, there you go. Right on front. Um, and that didn't change based on... No, it didn't. It just had to get entered into the portal, and you have to sign the copy that comes from the portal. Okay, so this is the default portal. Okay. And it, nothing is the same as what we've, we've seen before. Yes. Okay. So it's only by categories. It's not broken down the way our budget document is. Um, okay. <coughs> so you just need to sign it. Yes. Well, we're signing when we move on to child care for delivery session. So, um... There's a room available at the school reserved for child care. Mm -hmm. um, Is there heat? I can't speak to that. The children need heat? I, I didn't thought for two days after that. Mm. Oh, it was so cold at that meeting. No kidding. Um, I, I need to send Rich an email. Cause I brought I my did. target. Two pair. <laughs> yeah, you just after a certain number of years. You really? <laughs> wow, that was frigid. How could you have an assembly in there? Like if the kids were just sitting for a while. It's I don't think it's so it's bad. Not it's not like not that school. when it's something for the school. Oh, they don't turn when on I, uh, We can't have conversations. Oh, okay. But when I was there, yes, last night, it was nice and toasty. Just saying. In the gym. So. Huh. Well, I imagine it's expensive to eat. Oh, Makes sense. Well, that we, well, just like this is too, but I am going to send him a letter. Either that or we're going to relocate somewhere. So what is the question? Okay, so um, I so Denise suggested that I put a call out to see if um, people are aware of, the, you know, if they have children within the older children within their own families who are willing to volunteer for volunteer hours for school because they're required to have volunteer hours for school. Oh. So so there's that. But my question to the board is, um, are you willing to hire two people at what pay rate, or is it going to just be not available if we can't find volunteers? What have we done in the past? I don't remember ever paying We anyone. haven't had it for lots of times. Oh. And, yes, uh, and then last year, I think we might have gotten volunteers last year. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, 
Were they, I don't remember who was paid. Maybe they were a rec. Maybe they were. Yeah, we're getting. Um. Yeah. Um, but the year before, I know we had paid people. So um, I can't speak to the hourly rate last year, but I think the year before it was ten dollars. So, you know. An hour. Yeah. Well, I say we just put out something looking for volunteers to come and do it, and if we don't, if we don't get any volunteers to do it, we just don't have it. My my and my my worry is. So this is a town sanctioned daycare. What if someone gets hurt? Um, we're, we're covered with that because okay. we have our insurance rider with the school. Okay. The bigger the bigger thing I would have you consider is the is the effect on um, turnout at the deliberative session. Mm -hmm. um, not that turnout is ever in the last, you know for these last you know I, I, who knows what the turnout would be, but I would say pay two people like fifteen dollars an hour. Which we didn't budget for. Well, thirty same. bucks. It goes for like ten hours. Oh, well, does it? Well, I didn't realize. Oh, I didn't well, say I, hours. I really there's no. Long, but it it, it would be more than four. I mean, it, 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 jeez, I'm crowded. <laughs> four hours in that chair. Well, that's about <laughs> nearly what you did. The, Bring you know. Space heater. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I I just say you put it out there if you don't get any catches. I mean, we tried. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. The kids are allowed in the gym if they want to bring their children. You know, they can sit and read in the corner and... Okay. But if we get volunteers, yes, I think we do, but... Okay. Sure. We'll go with yeah. that? Okay. I'm good with that. All right. Town Administrator Job Description Revision. Um, that was on the one that you sent out. Yes. Okay. okay. I didn't have a problem with it. Did anybody else look at it? No. I didn't. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Do you, um... I trusted Denise, Denise's judgment. What was the revision? Would the revision was in the additional direct report, yeah. and then, um, there was, there was something else, and I brought contents that uh, don't include that. Don't um, Transfers yes, to. yes, um, it's in red. Oh, okay. Tax collection and planning. Response to public appeals for transfer station ordinance and other ordinances and policies as enabled by those documents and or the select board. That's it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good with those um, since we since we yeah. voted and yeah, sounds put great. them on your plate. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so let's have a motion that we accept the job description revisions. I make a motion that we accept the job description revisions to the town administrator description. I will second that. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Good. All right. Recreation deadline for legal review. All right. So recreation met last night. Um, they're working hard. That's all I can say. I mean, they're doing their job. But we that have to take a stand that we are supporting this and it's going to go forward. We can't be wishy-washy anymore about it. It, ha it, has to, it has to be going. Well, so I don't disagree, but if you're going to have the... So, so are you going to have the attorney review the parent handbook and the staff handbook? And if so, you know, allow for that feedback. Um, We've, we've got to make sure that, you know, some of those things that, you know, so I haven't, it, I have not read those revisions yet, so I don't know what they say, and I will get on that as soon as I can get on that. Um, yes, you have to decide for the people, I agree, that everybody needs to be able to plan on how they're, you know, what they're going to do for the summer, and you're going to lose people if this gets delayed too far. Um, at the same time, we need to make sure that it's what it needs to be so that we don't have the same concerns that it was before and allow, you know, the attorney time to review those things if you're going to um, have them reviewed, So, which was Primex's recommendation. So, you know, it's for you to decide what to do with that. I think all the efforts that's gone into redoing the manuals is only a positive thing. I mean, I don't see anything negative in there, and I don't really think that... It 
legal will find anything so drastically horrid that would stop us from having our program. I really don't. Do I think we need to have it look like legal? Yes, I do. But not to, to the point where I'm going to say REC isn't going forward. We have to take a stand. Are we going forward with it or I, are we not? I, I, mean, I thought we had decided that by including it. Budget, but it, well, we might have something too, but we kind of have. Yep. I, I, I know, Caroline, you're doing it with the best interest of REC, but it's kind of like saying, are we going to? Do we have what we need to go forward? Well, so we're my, working on it. So my well, that was my understanding is that we're working on it, so that we're including it in the budget, which will allow us the opportunity to work on it. But we've just been on the I'm working on it Thanks. stage. So you know. That's fine if you want to decide that it's going forward. Um, what I think needs to happen is a concrete decision of the board that these manuals are going through legal review and that um, hopefully you'll get feedback in time that you can react to that. But I haven't had the opportunity to be sure that we are not going to repeat some of the problems that we had last year um, with regard to, you know, do we have, you know, like I said, I have not read the revisions, mm -hmm. so we may be all set and I don't know. Okay. But, but we've had concerns last year that brought us to the point where we weren't sure that it was a good idea to continue. So we're not at the point where we've alleviated that, those concerns when really maybe maybe they are and you know because the revisions take care of it and, and the legal review will affirm that we just don't know that yet so I, I'm just I, what I'm what the reason that's on the agenda is to sort of decide by what date are we deciding that it's real or that it's not real or if it's going to legal by what time do you want that back so that whatever feedback you get you have time to react to because because you're right that we need to tell the public for real what's going on. Right, so I think the sooner the better. And my thought is, once our budget is approved, we're immediately going to start searching for the part-time rec director if it passes. And that person, it will be one of their responsibilities to go through you know, all of the policies that pertain to rec as well, you know, as well, the committee. Sure. You know, so it's not going to stop once, you know, well, once agreed. we get going. So, so I think we just need to say, yes, we, we're, we're aiming towards, you know, you know, starting to advertise and getting things going. I think, I think we've got, we've heard, we know we have things to work on, and I think that they're doing a great job working on those things. We have two new people that are dynamic and, and very, very involved, and I just think that we just say, we are going forward. We want to, we picked, last okay. night we picked our start date, and, you know, the end date. We picked so, our time frame, and they're meeting with Rich next week. And so I just think that we have to be firm that we're going forward and work and not stop. It, and not, nothing's I mean, going to stop. We're the, going to continue to be better. The way that better. it gets executed might not be the same as last year, right? It could be. Well, every year it's a little bit different. Yeah. And I guess that's part of the concern because, you know, while I've been... They got two new members, and that's really great. Mm -hmm. And they got the two most, like, the two largest, most important documents revised, mm -hmm. which is important, mm -hmm. but it's still not really clear to my mind in writing what's involved in doing grant writing and what are the, you know, deadlines for that and mm -hmm. who's doing it and, mm -hmm. you know, who's going to interview counselors and what's involved in that mm -hmm. and what is the job description for the rec director mm -hmm. so that we can be sure that, you know, it covers mm -hmm. everything and is there you know, do other committee members have responsibilities, and if so, what, what are they, what's involved yeah. in those? So, you know, while we're, you know, off to a really good start, I just, I want to make sure that we've got all those things covered. Agreed. And a lot of that's going to, we're going to have the help once we get our rec director, our part-time rec director that gets passed. Well, but we, so, that's the big one, is to get that job description written yep. so that we can make yep. sure that that I person agree. is... I will. I will carry on and make sure that that goes on and that goes forward. And I'll have it for next week so we can talk about it at our next meeting. Okay. So our rec meeting. Right. So yeah. so they're meeting on Wednesday and then the committee will. Um, I, is it is it the intent then that the committee will recommend the changes to those two handbooks and then 
and then the select board will take that version and send it to legal. I just want to hit the ground running with that. I would think that that's an expectation that we can go forward with, yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. I mean, there's a lot more work to be done, and I know that, but we're going to do it, and we're going to do it well, so it could take a little time to do. But I think you're right, the, the two manuals are the most important. Now, when you're talking about legal, Any idea what the cost is going to be on that? Um, significant, but not huge. How big is that? <laughs> that that's about as specific. And you know, there, it's it's not it's not inexpensive. You know, their their hourly rate is I'm not even sure what. But but we're talking about the law firm <coughs> that, that we use. Yes. Is is there any way that we can you know put something out looking for a pro bono work from lawyers within the town? I, I, every, every resident I've ever, you know, and, and I don't want to cast generalizations because we actually have quite a few attorneys in town, but any attorney resident that I've ever spoken to is really hesitant to offer a legal opinion unofficially because they're on the, they're on the hook for that. Okay. So, um, I mean, we can certainly ask, but I would not hold up a lot of hope for that. It's, it's, a, it's a significant project, where, whereas it took a lot of hours for really mostly Celia to, to do those two manuals, likewise it'll take a considerable number of hours for you know, any other one person to dive into it. Okay, so I really would like to have, have like an estimate of what the cost would be. And they might might be able to if we call and you know, say think, a manual of thirty two pages that. of yeah. manual three times two book of manuals. Absolutely. What what would what would be the estimated cost? So at least we I don't want to you know come back and then it's five thousand dollars. Right. You know, but well, I mean, you should be I'm able to know what your decision is. Twelve hundred to fifteen hundred and whatever. Whatever it is. But um, so let's see if we can get some kind of we'll leave it on the agenda for next week about the And I'll get a quote in the yeah. meantime. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. But Rec is going forward. So, okay. We'll be sure to cover that in our meeting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, legal updates. Um, so, in line with that, that's um, we, we touched upon it in an earlier meeting, but there wasn't really any decision about. Um, I believe the only we only have one open item with the attorney, which is the. Um, the Comcast franchise, cable oh, okay. franchise agreement. So um, that's currently in a one-year extension that expires in July. Um, do you want me to follow up on that? You know, I, I'm just, um, it, it's, it's, I, I put it out there because legal is one of those things where, you know, I manage those projects, but at the same time, um, they do incur an expense, and so where it's lapsed, you know, that can be your intent because you're managing the funds in that way, mm -hmm. and so I don't want to presume that you want to keep it going if you don't. Um, so it is the original contract that was dated from like 1978 or something like that that's been on one year renewals. So it should be reviewed yeah. and rewritten mm -hmm. at some point. So you're, you're putting it on here for the permission to contact the lawyers and find out what the status is on it? Yes. And an estimated and time of completion on their side. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm assuming they're not working on it without us prompting them. Well, I guess that's really the point. There hasn't been any bills for it, right. so right. that would indicate that I they're mean, not really working on it. Hopefully they're not working 10 hours a week. And <laughs> well, they don't bill that way. Yeah. Like, they don't, they don't send quarterly bills or things like that. So I, I wouldn't expect that that's the case, but because um, there's an expense to, you know, something that's lapsed, not lapsing. Yeah. Yep. Now we need to get a, a definitely um, All right. an update on it. Okay. Um, just one other, so there's there's not something with legal for our zoning issue? So um, E and F both really need to happen. Okay. Those two non-publics really need to happen, so I would suggest if you want to talk about um, okay. policies that we uh, like go through the rest of the agenda and we can do non policy at the end. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we can go. Yeah. All right, so policy, purchasing policy. Have you guys gone through it? 
I did read it. I I didn't really have any. Um, I don't know if you have copies of it. Sorry, the mess again. Do you have? Oh, you just have to do. Um, I have two. I did. I, I think mine's a. But now you both you all have my copies. So. I, I think I'm gonna get my folder. I do have another copy of it. budgets 
and what balances are remaining in their department lines when they're making credit card purchases. That scares me the most. And it's already said and done when we get that, that charge. So somehow we have to give our department heads an uh, updated budget of expenses and where their lines stand, like at least monthly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But um, that, isn't, that isn't currently happening, right? Only if they ask for it. They get it quarterly, and then um, they may get it more than quarterly, and they certainly get it whenever they want it. And, right, right. You know, but, you know, but I'm just saying, we, you know, um, I had a conversation with Chuck, t too, um, earlier in the year, but, um, like, it would be nice to have a copy of what the expenditures once they've done for the month, so we can see that. Oh, and I, oh absolutely. You know, so I, we're all on the same page about that. That's very workable and doable, yeah. without so question. It can go electronically, because we're all oh, dealing absolutely. with the same thing, and it can go electronically. But I want them to start looking at their lines before they're you know inches away from spending it all, yeah. and increasing their ability to charge more is going to have that budget line go down much faster. So that's my caution. I'm not saying I won't support it. It's just I'm cautious of yeah, no, I, they need to I, I do their due that, diligence. Um, just because we're giving them this extra latitude. Doesn't mean they have to spend it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, but I, I, understand their, I understand what they want and why they want it. But I also, they have to understand that they it, they really need to be careful when they're using their credit cards because you know you're not filling out POs, you're not doing any of the crap that's just going through. And so, so um, yes. And when you look at this, um, what, so once we once we implement a new purchasing policy, um, we need to be sure that. Um, we're making sure that the purchase orders that are required are required are are are, um, are sought before the purchase is absolutely so so to that end the purchasing policy needs to reflect what one does in an emergency and define an emergency so that department heads understand um, when they can just get what they need because they need it. Mm -hmm. And get a retroactive purchase order, or or then what? Yeah, uh, you know, ninety percent of the time on certain things, PO came with invoice. That's not that's not getting authorization before spending. So we have to be a little firmer on that, mm -hmm. I think, um, especially when we're talking about some, you know thousands of dollars. Right. I think they check their budgets. I'm not doubting that, but sometimes they don't understand why we have to have some restrictions at certain times of the month and certain times of the year where we may not want to have a lot of cash flow going out, you know. Well, there's that. And so, um, you know, that's something that we can speak to in the policy mm -hmm. if you want to add things um, to that effect, the, the two months of the year when when you would want them to think differently, but mm -hmm. um, um, define that, mm -hmm. you know. So, so the month before each tax bill goes out, you know, when it gets tight, mm -hmm. or or maybe it's six weeks, or, or whatever whatever you decide, you you want it to reflect what um, how would how would you what would you write? How would you want their behavior to be different? Um, I just think that emergencies have to be a real emergency, that you're down and out and you well, can't perform anything else, and you make a phone call to say, I have to do this. Right. If so, it's, you know, a certain dollar amount, and it's either to you or to uh, the chair of the select board, saying, okay, this is a situation, we need to get go forward on this, can I do this, and provide backup later. There, I know that there's times, especially, well, with all three departments, I mean, outside, from, you know, highway, fire, police. So, Section 9 on page 8, if you're looking at landscape, that's not going to help you, Denise, but um, Section 9, anyway, speaks to emergencies. Mm -hmm. um, it does say that they tell the select board. I don't know if you want to... Um, 
doesn't hurt to. With the second sentence of the to. second paragraph, I don't know, like. If that remains the board or if that becomes my responsibility. Well, I can, I, I would say it, it could be both. That's it. And or. And or. You know, um, just because. Board members may not be available. Well, and, they don't, you know, it, this isn't saying they get approval. They're saying they notify. We have an emergency, you, and this is the situation. Yeah, and because well, I don't think you should wait for an approval if the heat's out, right? Right, right, um, right. No, no. Yeah, absolutely. But is, um, I'm going to try to use an example, but um, I can't give an example. Extra oh. shovels. Extra shovels is... <laughs> Not an emergency. I'm not saying anybody did that. I'm just no, saying you know, yeah, not I mean, an emergency. Okay, so um, it's easy to spend two hundred dollars, and you can buy extra shovels and easily come over two hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, I mean, just a just a a major incident with a car or, or a fire that truck or a emergency. highway. You know that you can't do anything with that vehicle. Can I bring it in to get it fixed? Well, you know, right. that kind of thing. Uh, or I don't think that we should. I don't think I like the way it's worded right now, which is that I think that there's we should maintain a level of, of giving the department heads autonomy to you know. I don't think I'm not in favor of. I, I trust them to make the judgment that they made. I think that it would have been uh, if the chief had to call us yesterday or whenever the heat was out or whatever. He's not gonna want to do that, he, and we also put him in that position and hope that he would have the judgment to, to make the right choice, which was to call and have the heat replaced or fixed or whatever. I don't think that we should ask them to, if it's an emergency and they, we've hired them and trust them to be department heads, I think they should be able to, to make that decision without having to call and notify anyone ahead of time. I think that this makes sense, that they call, uh, they let us know as soon as what happened, as soon as they can. I don't disagree with you. I, 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 I think that I'm thinking of other things. I just remember people sitting across from us who are now coming in to get purchase orders signed, invoice in hand, and oh, purchase yeah, order. Not that yeah, is unacceptable. That's than an emergency. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, that's what they're saying, but I needed it right away. Okay, so to find what you need right away, you know, and fixing a boiler in, a, in the winter months of a, of a building, to me, does right. not have to I think that's completely any different than this section, though. I think that that's a whole other dis discussion that we need to have yeah. with them, but that's not addressed. I think the purchasing policy, as it stands, actually addresses that behavior. We've just not been enforcing it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's it. different than this conversation, which is that I think this makes sense. Select board shall be notified as soon as practical. As soon as practi practical? Is that a word? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I usually think I'm pretty good with words. Soon as practicable, as the emergency needs to say to purchase. So I think in the future when someone shows up that's with an invoice, that's we ask, was this an emergency? Right, right. Uh, I'm just saying, we, uh, there, there was a lot last year oh, yeah. with invoice no, attacks. It's, it's, so, um, it, I'm not trying to micromanage either. Sure. I just think that... Oh. Yeah. Town money needs to be treated no, as such, and, so, and, and I'm not okay. I'm okay with the Are you okay with the line? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, Able to be done or put into practice successfully. It is a word. <laughs> it wasn't mine, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I just. Sorry. Carmen's may seem to feel differently than maybe the board would of what a really an emergency is, you know. Right. So, having a phone call. Walk it through, can get a, can get an answer saying, okay, yeah, you know. But I would never hold them hostage for heat, or you know, if they're down, yeah. major piece of equipment, the uh, dump truck that needs to be plowed tomorrow, you know, or a fire truck. Needs to be, I, I'm not saying that that can't happen, but at least notify us when it does happen, so we are prepared. So. If a vehicle requires emergency repair, and then they're doing a purchase order after the fact, should that be subject to a purchase order, or is it enough to tell the office that, or, and or the board that there was that emergency? Is it helpful or useful to you to go through that purchase order policy for an emergency expense? I would say no. I would say no if notification has been given. 
And, you know, I'm okay with you saying to the town administrator slash select board, whichever one they can get in touch with, you know, um, and they have our numbers. So it's, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be a task for them to do that. Um, just on a I mean, I'm talking about <coughs> that possibly will be a lot of money, you know, so. So I will rewrite this to reflect that emergency expenditures as defined mm -hmm. um, will not be subject to the purchase order provision. Yeah. 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 Because there's really no point. Because it's, 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 it's an act of the fact, you know. But if we have to know it's happened. That's it. Or it's going to be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I will make that revision. Um, So, I'm sorry, are you going back to the beginning? Okay, so how do we feel about increasing their goods to 500? Great. You're okay with that? So, so yeah. just to, so at, up to 500, it's a limited purchase order. Or am I reading this wrong? So, I would go to number three, mm -hmm. and you're just, it's number three. You're changing number three to be 500 instead of no, this is 200. Two. Because that's current. Oh, okay. So I'm this sorry. is not proposed. So this is oh, current. Oh, you don't have the re showing the revisions with a cross down hem pop in next. No. Oh, okay. So we have multiple versions going on. Oh, okay. So it's now okay. 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 Yeah. That, okay, no. That's why. Oh, mine's I was different too. Okay, maybe the copies you had in hand. Because I have, I have one from that was okay. sent to us. Okay. All right. So I so, apologize. For yeah. That. So what she's what she's proposing yep. is it's increased to five hundred, which I don't have a problem with. Yeah. Nope. Okay. And then also under other means, she's crossing off the first sentence in there. Okay. Okay. Yep. And then. On number four, she's proposing it instead of 500, it's 1,000. Purchasing goods and services up to 1,000. Okay. So between 501 and 1,000, they follow number four. True. Right. So that's okay, laid so out in, in the table um, yeah. near the back. Okay, like, so on page, um, under three though, does, isn't that 500? You recommend 8,000. So you go four, you go to the next page, the first paragraph, it says 500. Shouldn't that be 1,000? Yeah. That, that would be a. Because yeah. um, you're crossing it off. Yes. One. Okay, so you have to change that to 1,000. Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah. The table is actually correct. Okay, so then number five would be 1,000 to 3,000? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then what you're saying is they need to have a demonstrate compare um, comparative um, information. Uh -huh. um, And what you're, and what they're, she's saying is that we need to have written quotes to be able to compare to see, and it would then be once it's turned into the board or the town administrator, that's when authorization will happen, not before. Okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then D goes over to the next page. Well, you, you're, everybody else is landscape, mm -hmm. oh. so in your oh. portrait. Sorry, guys. All right. Um, what number are you? What section are you? That was five. Five. It just, it, it probably didn't go over on the next page on them. Yeah. It, it's yeah. all stayed together. Okay, so. Um, so, six is going from 3,000 to no more than 10,000. And... <clears throat> And what they need to do is um, obtain three quotations. Uh -huh. Read it in three. Uh, 
three thousand, no more than ten. So they are required to give us three quotations um, to make sure that we're getting the best price. But it does say in G that you're not bound by that, and you can go with the greatest value, but that you just have three quotes to choose from, and you also can waive um, in F. You can waive the three quotes if yeah. you can't find three vendors to respond. Yeah. Right. Yeah. this question earlier. Who is the Board of Trustees? You answered in that. I can't remember what Okay, so this is, um, this is trying to be in, so, so it's a town policy when you adopt it, um, but it's trying to be respectful of the library trustees because they're, they have authority over their own funds. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it's worth passing it by them to see how they feel about this. It's not as though they typically procure large dollar amount purchases mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, I, I believe that you have the authority to implement this policy over them. Mm -hmm. But I'm, you know, it's worth talking to them about. I'm not sure, you know, because they're town funds. Yep. But it's, it's worth talking to NHMA about to make sure that we're, um, or else I might revisit the um, library trustee laws because they're 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 what different. What about the cemetery? They're not the same as library trustees. Um, they fall, but they are trustees. So I don't I don't really know. They they for for the purposes of this, I think it's it's worth checking in with the municipal association to see. Um, If they have, um, if you can do this over them, which I, I believe you can, but we should check that. Okay. okay. Um, so then seven, going from ten to no more than twenty-five thousand, which requires um, three proposals as well, and. Next are comma in C, 7C, following Board of Trustees, So we can leave that. We can 
always waive your policies. You don't really, it's a policy. Yeah, it's a policy. You don't really have to follow it. It's a guideline of best practices. Um, I do want to bring your attention to number 10 when you get there.
Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think, you know, to be in fairness across the board, you know, making a, a statement saying that any black PO, I, I would go second yeah. of it. And, you know, and that leaves, that leaves some room yeah. for emergencies that may occur. And, yeah. you know, I did, we also just make sure that, because I don't know, I think George is probably the, the one that would benefit this the most to yeah. this salt and sand and the most stack kind of I mean, that's what he does. I don't know how fire and police would have, have a need for that. Yeah. Fire, um, the getting their air tanks refilled? That doesn't cost. does cost. The, the air tanks? No, they, they go to the center and then refill. Oh, I thought they had to pay. Well, I think they pay to be. Oh, oh, that's not what she said. She said I, I thought they had to pay to have, to have their tank skills. No, yeah. they they belong to the association uh, yeah. that buys the air truck got and it. it's stored in some as well or, or whatever. But it's not something you have to pay every time you have your tank skills. I'm thinking about something else. You yeah, must be because that's. I thought there was something they had to pay to have built, but whatever. Not not their tank skills. It literally doesn't matter. But I mean, <laughs> they don't have anything that's. I, I can't think of anything that either them. one of those will horses. <laughs> <laughs> one day it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but um, I do see how this would benefit George. Well, and, and also, do you want it to benefit you all in um, electric and fuel bills? Like, or do you want to continue to approve those? Do you, you know, electricity and Heat. We're not controlling it, so we're just signing we're just it because that's, it. it is what it is. Right. I mean, um, I think, I think if you review them, you can sign those because it, it's, a, it's something that happens after the fact, and if, and if anything goes up so that drastically with no explanation, you would open the door. I mean, I, I, I can't see waiting for us to sign like this bill or. Around, vehicle fuel, cell phone, vehicle fuel. So maybe we can come up with a list of those types of things. Cell phone. I mean, those are all after the fact. The utilities. The like, utilities. I mean, maybe we can just say utilities. I think that water, sewer. anything with, within the fire station or highway or police department. Or so hall, I would um, suggest maybe, you know. Think about it this way, what do, you, what do you approve that you really think you still want to approve? Like maybe a credit card or legal bills? Mm -hmm. Are there legal for sure. We um, have to have a review of that for sure. Yeah, you know, I mean the credit card, you know the credit card, like this is this is after the fact. We're just signing it to get it process. I mean I think that as the town minister, I mean you could do that. Um, and so we're not taking you might want to look at like consulting bill. Well, and those kind of things. Uh, but I can. So again, I you know, as as the person who manages planning, can I approve? You know, would you delegate that to me to approve, or do you still want to see them approve? I just don't. No, we're just going to sign them because we don't know. Really we think it's going to have to the process of looking at it, and it's not anything that's going to be well, changed. Well, that stuff is reinforcing quite a lot. It is. Right. Now, like, we weren't going to solve. I mean, I think that this is something that, you know, this, and, and again, if we did a plan the PO process, it would be part of it. Your responsibility, if you're going to take on the signature of these, is to alert us of anything that you find that unusual, unusual or, or budget you know, trending. right? In in you know, we're only in July and we're spent with electricity. Okay, something big is happening. Well, but, but also remember, you're getting your monthly expenditure reports, so you're, you're you right. can yeah. also see right. that. Yeah, too. and then we say, okay, we want, we want to start seeing these for a little bit to see what's going on with us. Sure. You know, so I think anything to do with facilities, as in electricity, like the propane, operational, all operational yeah. stuff. As absolutely, let me just revise my thought just a bit. I do not want the responsibilities of the select board to go on you. It is going to overwhelm you. So you have to let us know if too much is going on your plate. 
Approving bills really is not because. Was you there at the time? Checks giving them to you? Or I'm looking at them anyway. Right, okay. Yeah. But all I'm saying, and, it, and if it affects your office and your. Uh, it, it affects it, you personally in some fashion of how your job it should go to us. I understand. It, you understand I, I do understand. Okay. You're, you're trying not to burden me, and I appreciate that. But really, it, it's it's a benefit to us because we're. Um, I have to look at them anyway, but it helps us pay them faster. Right. It's more efficient. For it's sure. More efficient. And I and I don't. But anything that you see that just stands out, you oh, just run by us. Absolutely. But it also, if it's something that you have purchased, then you can't approve it. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really good point because um, we don't really have a mechanism for that right now. Um, Are you purchasing anything? Well, I purchase should. supplies and I purchase postage. Um, it's it's typically limited to that. Yeah. Um, the um, Google Google is charged to my credit card every month. That's an automatic. If that's the um, entire Google, not just your It is. It's the yeah, entire just, Google. What do I want to say? What if you, uh, you wanted uh, I, I want to buy two a new brand desk, new you know, like file a cabinets or for your right. office or a brand new desk? That has to come to us. Um, we need to we should write something. that somehow yeah. because that's not currently the case. I know. I know. And that's fine, but yeah. we need to... Um, I'm just saying if it affects you personally within the job that you're doing, you at least need to run it by, by the same board. You know, and is that, that we is think that within five hundred dollars, or you know, I think just because, or or is it like regular supplies? It's not pencils and paper. Okay, yeah, it's not so just you. It's the whole office. You're buying it for the whole office, but if. But if it's something that is not a routine, everyday expense that, and you want to, I mean, it's greater than five hundred million dollars. Well, it's, I think your concern is you're saying you're wrong. Budgeted, um, well, unbudgeted, so, yeah, um, yeah. But another great area in the budget because there's a lot of unbudgeted stuff because <coughs> we have to say, okay, that's. And a good, let's keep it there, let's keep it there, and nobody's telling them. And again, it's something we need to work on this year because, you know, supplies or equipment is just not good enough anymore, in my opinion, you know, for any department. So we need to be, when they're doing their budgets and their equipment line is $10,000, I want to know what your intent is to spend that $10,000. And then, that would be you looking and saying, oh, I keep on buying all this kind of stuff, but your intent is not getting, so how is that going to get? You know what I'm saying? That they, it, well, but all I can do is, is alert that the board. to you. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So then we can approach. But I'm just saying, it, I just want to make sure that we don't have that conflict with anything that you would order with you approving it as well. That's all. Second set of eyes. But not routine. I just, I just wanted to find so that we're all on the same page. Let me work on that part of it, and I'll, I'll go back to you on that. Okay. I just, it's, it's more covering you. I don't disagree. Yeah. I, I don't disagree, you know. But I'm not talking about paper, and I'm not talking about pencils and binders and stuff for the I think we office. pretty much have that in place, but I want to make sure that we have it in writing such that yep. you feel as though anyone can follow it, and I feel mm -hmm. as though whatever I do, I'm protected if I'm following it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, that's fine. It's just, it's, it's more about bigger purchases, not the oh, I get $500 that. ones. You know? I just want to be clear. Yep. So and, you purchase. know, and this is something we hope will go for the next hundred years, so whoever else is oh, there behind oh, you. you are an optimist, aren't you? Well, I'm going to be here to deal with it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Thank are we in agreement that she would be okay to authorize the, um, yeah, the, 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 the invoices yep. for facilities? Yes, and for um, small purchases from the department heads, as long as well, it's within their budget. Well, no, I'm not approving anything of department heads. Department heads, they get to, you know, they have the authority to spend up to five hundred dollars. So all I'm doing is when an invoice comes in, they sign off on it, saying yes, I really did receive that. Okay, and so are, and and we're not going to gonna sign on it. We're not going to sign it either. No. Nope. Well, that's what that's how it's written, and that's currently what happens under two hundred dollars. You're not seeing anything that happens under two hundred dollars. 
and well, so this unless is, they write POs, which they have done that a lot. So they, it doesn't really have to have a PO on it. Right, like that they have the authority to spend at will within their budget mm -hmm. up to currently $200, mm -hmm. and now we're proposing to change mm -hmm. that to $500. Right, okay, so yeah, I think that's... I think that's so I'm not approving that. anything that a department does or doesn't do. Mm -hmm. I'm just verifying that if it's over that threshold that they do have a purchase order for it, mm -hmm. and then they still, even if they have a purchase order, they, they have to sign the, the, the invoice to indicate that not only did they get the purchase order, but they really did buy it, and they're happy with it, yeah. they didn't return it, yeah. they didn't overcharge me, whatever right. like that. Right, right. Um, Agreed. Okay. But I'm not approving anything they okay. do. Okay, all right. So, um, you are, however, will be the authorizing signature for anything that happens in this building for purchases. like office supplies, they have to come to you before they can order something, is what I'm asking. Is that, is that your understanding? As it is now, yes, with the exception of the, the janitor who has the ability to go off-site and buy cleaning supplies and paper towels. That's and are you you're comfortable with that? Absolutely, because okay. that's, you know, I, I would take that on a, an individual by individual basis. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. But you know. no one can buy something without first going through you in this office. Chuck, Andrea, and Kate. Nobody has a mechanism to do that. that I, I, I'd have to think about how, I'd have to think about making sure that's true. Like, you know, somebody could invoice something. Right. I think... I think it should, we, we got to spell it out in the policy, I would say. Well, um, none of them have budgets, so they shouldn't have buying power. Well, election lunches, you know. Okay, Kate does have a budget, but Andrew and Chuck don't, or John right. Clark, or any of those. So if they need to buy something, they need to go to you first and have it authorized before it can be purchased. Yes. After it's purchased. Agreed. Okay. I, I want to, you know, we, we just need to make sure that... Um, yeah, I'll, I can write up some virgin. virgin. And where we're sticking it in here. And I, I think it, 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 you know, I just want to, I guess, reread this with that in mind to make sure that this language reflects that. Because right. it, it talks about department heads, but maybe it's worth defining department heads or defining non-department heads or something so that we're really... Well, now, department... Department heads, it's on their responsibility, but for instance, uh, the tenant may go downstairs and purchase something for, or arrange to have something purchased for Bob, but it's his responsibility because it's his budget as the Well, because he authorized that person purchase to so do it. Likewise, <coughs> I would ask the shop to go online and, and buy the, the, the one or two things that I tell him yes. to buy, and yes. if he does what I'm asking him to do, then it's the same thing, it, really. Yes. So that's what that's kind of the point I was getting to is you know because fire might do the same thing they, yes everybody and does highway that. may do the same yes. thing so but they have to the one who's going to take the responsibility is the department head which right so so the idea right so that's me in it this would case. be you and then it would be Bob Mark Ed and then George yeah we have five department heads agreed yeah um, or do you yes. count Tom as a department no no. He's on you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So do we want to list them so it's clear for the department? Okay. Doing. Yeah. Library or no? Uh, they, well, their budget is, is a little different. They so. are a department, though, and she is a department head. Um, but I don't know how. Um, we have to reread the whole authority of the of the library trustees because we can't delegate. We can't give her authority that the library trustees don't give her. You know, she reports to the library trustees, so we can't give her the authority to do something yeah. that the yeah. library trustees say she can't do, you know? I think we just need to not have them be part of that department head. You know, I, I understand what you're saying, but they have, have their own her. rules to yeah. follow because of their own leaders. So, All right. Yeah. Okay. It's 9 o'clock. I would say that's going to non-public and okay. Yeah, I mean I I'm think we need good progress here. Thank you for that. I will send out revisions. Okay. All right.
I will move that we don't. Oh. Can we assume we have that before we go in? Nope. Go ahead. He said no, so no. Um, I would strongly ask you guys to reconsider possibly paying one person, one adult, who may already be a town employee, to do the deliberative session and supervise the volunteers. Just because if you have somebody from the library, the school, or the rec department who have already completed their paperwork, they've already had a background check, it might make the families feel more comfortable. And if we bring our children, I have been looked at and spoken to before about my children being obnoxious and disrupting the meeting. And I'd rather not put myself or any of the other constituents in the town in that position where my children are being disruptive and you're having to talk over them or having to worry about them. I'd rather have a place where they can go and be safe. And there's an adult who's been trained or knows the policies of the town just to oversee the people that are there. Um, you have several resources in town that you can tap into for just one person and then have a bunch of volunteers underneath them. I'm just asking you to reconsider that. And um, then I would also, on your purchasing policy, since we're planning to go ahead with the rec director, put a sixth department head uh, as your rec director pending approval. Mm -hmm. Director, rec, the rec, the rec director is in the department, the person works under the, the board of selectmen. Okay. At this point, we just have to get it going. It can be changed later. Go ahead. Uh, just a point of it. Are you are you meeting next Monday? Yes. Okay. Um, because Mark from Dover. Monday Bo the twenty seventh. Yes, we have a public hearing. We have a public hearing at six and a meeting at six thirty. Mark from Dover Bowl had intended to come to your next select board meeting, but he didn't realize tonight was a meeting. So he would like to speak to you about the sports. And why isn't he contacting us and not going through your don't ask me. That's he just met, he just he just asked me when the next select board meeting was. That's all I he asked. He's welcome to do that. Hmm? He's welcome to do that. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I noticed when we were out in, for that one period of time with the doors closed. Uh huh. The walked in here was a lot warmer. Yeah, yeah. You're so I would right. suggest you close the keep door. Them, and, yeah, or keep them at least. Yeah, and we just maybe not. a jar of tea. Yeah. Yeah. But you uh, are you saying it. that you're cold there, or that it's well, too warm in here? No, it was no, it, it was warmer, warmer in here. Now it's cold. Yeah. I mean, oh, that during the meeting that during we closed the meeting, them we could just, a little bit. Just not lock yeah. it, but okay. have it open okay. that much so people can yeah. come and go. But you could good point. You could. You could. The other thing is, have we? I know we haven't got the windows down yet. Have we got an update on that? Oh, are they leaking? I am a shrink master. Do you, do you use these blinds? <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. I did it, and I, I was like, this is going to be the hardest thing in the mm -hmm. planet. And I did it, and it was so easy, and I'm so bad at those things. And they sell the kits for like, I don't know, five bucks. They probably make them big enough for this, because, yeah, they do, because they make them big enough for double doors. And yeah. you put a sticky strip all around the edge, and then you take saran wrap, basically, and stick it all around, and then you take a hair dryer, and you hair dry it, and it all shrinks up, and it is so cool. And it is amazing how much it stops. Like, my, if, you, if you're standing in my bathroom and you put your hand up to my window, you could feel wind blowing in. Mm -hmm. But if you put the shrink wrap up, it stops it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you, if you do that, then you can't access the lines. I don't know, I just interrupted where I was talking, but that would that, that would be me. So <laughs> a lot of me. <laughs> so very passionately, and it got ripped down the next week because we had to we had a problem in there and we needed to use the window. Whatever. <laughs> what my thought process was that have we ever thought about putting thermal shades up? Well those make a difference too. They do, they're really expensive. Mm. That's like forty bucks a panel. No, not curtains. Okay. Uh, I like thermal cellular shades. Shade. No, I'm talking about a thermal an insulated shade that comes down. Cellular, like like holes in the like like no, no, they're just, no. They're just a soft. They're like a padded shade mm -hmm. that will 
insulated lock the like window. Insulated, well, so. Um, but the ability to put it up and down if you wanted to. Thermal shades. I oh, I, I know, I know. Um, I can go into the weeds about thermal shades, okay? I, I, I just, I. Just like it's trash. So I passed that. Passion. Oh, I could, no, I, I just spent 20 years in the industry. So oh we can gosh. talk about it, but. Um, Window treatment industry? Yes. Another day. <laughs> um, you can do it, but let's wait. And it, it's going to be expensive, so mm -hmm. let's wait like and see. Sixty bucks for a Let's wait and one. see what, how far repair gets, and then if repair really doesn't solve the problem, then let's talk about well, it. Well, even just for this one room, or maybe I don't know. I, yeah, I, yeah I don't I, know. you know, I I'm tired of being frozen. In leaving here, so I mean, we either got to kind of sit here, or we got to. Well, the other thing I would suggest, which is a lot less expensive, so <laughs> if, if it continues to be a problem, is 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 more tight and shrink wrap is a lot less more tight and or shrink wrap okay. is a lot less expensive then than. Okay, all right. It's just a, it's, it's, it just needs to it needs to, and I know that next door they're always cold for when they first come in, right? Because it's well, we've managed that much better because. To Salme's point, if you close these doors, um, so we have a routine now where at night we close these doors mm -hmm. so that this thermostat is not picking up the hall heat. Mm -hmm. um, then um, when the first person in in the morning opens up those two doors mm -hmm. so that this is open with the front office, mm -hmm. and then that triggers this heat. We, when we turn this heat up, that front office actually warms up now, which wasn't okay. the case before because it was closed off from the thermostat that was getting... Anyway, so okay, okay, it's, that's it's good. better. That's good. Okay. It's not awesome, but it's much All right. better. All right. Well, let's hope that they'll come and fix the windows, and hopefully that's um, a big part of it. Probably the second or third week in February. But, but if not, maybe we can get drafters for the bottom or whatever. You um, know, the more tight, sticky stuff, and yeah, the shrink wrap's actually not not a bad idea, except it's for it's I'm not sure if we have a ladder tall well enough to do it. We have to yeah. call the fire department to get a ladder. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a ladder. Yeah. But anyway, okay, well, we just need to work on it. Um, it's, it's, it, thank you for the conversation because mm -hmm. it's, you know, we can do something for sure. Is this tape too? Yeah, yeah there, there are all kinds of things. Taste tape that yeah. you can put yeah. on. Uh, seal the um, yeah. Yeah, I think we beat this horse a little <laughs> bit. <too. laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll work on it though because it is, it is getting cold. So, all right, so we're going into non public. Uh -huh. You're all set? Okay. I move we go into non-public. RSA 91A, the one for section 2. Letter A, personnel. All right. And